guys what's up it's your girl miss champagne b and if you are here you may have been a part of my single gal group which i greatly appreciated um i appreciate how you guys rocked and rolled me to find my passion and i'm thinking i found it so i'm doing a lot more videos focusing on bartending and life with it because it's just so interesting to me and i love it and i just feel like it goes it kind of feeds into my single life because a lot of things that happen in bartending life is kind of like I could only get away with that if I was single. If you get a chance, please subscribe, share, like the video, and I also share, you know, make cocktails through it so you can learn something. And you won't feel like it's a complete race when you're just hearing about my day and my world and the life of bartending. I named this Diary of a Mad Black Bartender because when I say mad, I don't mean mad as an angry, mad as in crazy, like, ah, some of the things that, you know, you deal with can be maddening. Um, or, dang, Champagne, you you mad. You, you you that crazy you do X, Y, and Z? Because I do crazy shit, too. So it goes hand to hands. Thank you so much for watching. Let's talk about today's drink, first of all. I'm using my Ho 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 cup. It is, I know it's super early. It's, it's just November, early November. Um, I know. But I am a Christmas chick. I do, I love Christmas. Because I like the just decorating all the I like what it's supposed to ideology stand for which is love each other share one another it's just like yes people are a little bit nicer around this time just just a little bit because we're in the service industry you're always gonna find people who are dickheads just because you know they are so today's drink I made a daiquiri, a daiquiri. Ooh. I did double strain it with my Hawthorne strainer and my um, my um fine strainer but it could be a little bit clearer um again it goes it goes down to like technique also but also like your ingredients that you have um and then i did also kind of just squeeze some more lemon in here lime on the way in here so you know it's not as strained and mixed together so that's why you're also see kind of a little a little bit cloudy but i think it should be a little bit clearer it should be a lime twist I'm not the greatest at twist just yet, and I'm a little bit lazy. I didn't feel like doing the twist. I mean, twists are easy, but I just, I just didn't want to do that much and get all the lime on my fingers. Um, so I ended up just doing a nice little wedge, throwing that bitch on there. Boop. And like I said, it's in my ho 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 glass. So for the holidays, you're going to see a lot more of my ho 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 glasses. Ho 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 <clears throat> ho 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 glasses. See how it tastes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I felt like I feel like the um I would like the, it to be a little sweeter. I feel like which is what I like. So I make it I made it a bit more sour because I like sour stuff, but I could I should add more sweetener or a pinch more sweetener in it. When I kept when I added more sour, definitely taste the spirit. Um, I used Bacardi rum, Bacardi Superior rum, I believe. Mm. Okay, I'm trying not to drink it all right now because I got a story to tell. But I will be back to sip upon that if you know what I'm saying. I want to talk about my first time bartending. Um, you might hear something, that's my dog. He's just, he's restless right now. And so a lot of people always ask about your first time bartending. <clears throat> you know, how was it? Were you nervous? Were you scared? And I, I pretty much like, I was, I was pretty nervous. I, I had, I had some practice in bartending. So, um, there were certain things that I was accustomed to. So for instance, um, pouring. Um, unfortunately, in the other places I, I worked in, a lot of those places you use, they wanted you to measure using a jigger, which I was fine with. But um, free pouring. Free pouring is when you have the bottle upside down and instead of you measuring it or having something that's automated that tells you how long that pour is, um, it just, you have to rely on your count. So some people use a four count, some people use like an eight count. Everybody has their count. But at the end of the day, your measure should still come out to one and a half to two ounces depending on the drink that you're serving when i first started bartending my first event i i was there it, it was in a, like a little dive bar a little bar and um 
I had bullshitted my way in there. I was like, oh yeah, you know, I know what to do. I've been bartending here. And they were like, oh yeah, you're new, you're new. And I had like basic um, practice with bartending, like doing like small events and just the things that I read. Like YouTube, YouTube was fucking helpful. If you want to get into bartending and you want to get a basic understanding of bartending, YouTube is like a great plethora of information for you to jump in and to really learn about it because it's just like fucking overload, you know, overload. But you learn so much that if you have the the confidence to back up that knowledge and you practice it, you can just walk into many establishment and bullshit your way into a job. When I had went into the bar and I set up and I'm just like, oh, I'm so nervous. So I didn't, I didn't work by myself, which was cool. Like I trained along somebody. And um, I'm like a quick study. Like I'll just, I'll, I'll watch you to kind of get what you're doing and then I'll try to go through the motions of doing it. And then after a few minutes, if it's, you know, if it's really easy, it's just, I, I got it. So I, you know, I was walking through and this person was watching them um, bartend and it was the shots and the pours and, and I just, I just started doing it. Like that's the best way I, I can say I, I got into it. He wanted me to work like on a really busy night, and I was like, uh, I don't know that I could really, could really do it. He's like, Well, you gotta do it in this, or you're, you're, you're no good to me. And I was like, oh. Like, bro, I told you I haven't bartended a lot. Like, why are you gonna put me on a spot like this? Oh. Luckily, I'm on a register that doesn't see as much traffic as the first register, so people are coming over to me, and and, and it was, I was very glad to have my first start in a. A quote unquote dive bar and hole in the wall bar. Um, because again, the, ex the expectations for the majority of people is lower there. So, one, you're doing more, more, mostly one spirit or one liquor and a mixer like Henny and Coke, Jack and Coke, Rum and Coke. You're really doing those the majority of the time, and um when you're just doing those over and over again, it's really easy just to get it. Now, now at this point, it's just like, you want Jack and Coke? Okay. Now it's just me practicing my pours. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Every now and then people will come in for a drink. So it allowed me to practice some drinks like a tequila sunrise or a, a sex on the beach. Like those are like your most common in a lot of the bars. I will say I work in hood bars. <laughs> a lot of the hood bars I work with, work with, women come in, they want to feel fancy. Those are the two drinks that they will order. Sex on the beach, tequila sunrise. Like those are the fanciest drinks ever, you know? Um, oh, oh, Patron margaritas too. And you'll, and you'll start to like learn like the kind of bar you have and the people in your area. You'll start to know what they like to drink, like what their tastes are like. And you'll start to study those drinks and then you can start studying newer drinks and kind of pushing that in. So do a rum runner. Um, or you can make a Mai Tai, which is pretty sweet. So you study on the outside, and then when you break it back in, you practice and you let them taste it. That's, and that's why I used to do, and that's why I started learning the different tastes of drinks, what people like, what people don't like. Like, I just I, I just learned that better. And it really has to do a lot with the type of bar that you're in or the type of restaurant that you're in. A certain type of people will ask for a certain type of thing. And every now and then, you might get somebody who comes from, say, Uzbekistan. And they might come and say, um, I would like the Caipirinha. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, which is like a cocktail based out of, I think, Brazil. And um, you're gonna be like, the fuck? This is where it makes and breaks you as a bartender. Either you're gonna be one of those bartenders who are just like, mm, I don't know how to make that. Can I get you like a rum and coke? Or if you are smart, you might say, you know what, let me check to see if I have the stuff here. Um, because no one really asks for that. Let me check to see if I have it run to your cell phone, pull up a recipe, see if you have the ingredients, see if you can make it, and then try it out. But I usually give a disclaimer, like if you're working on a dive bar, I usually get a disclaimer like, hey, you know, it's been a while since I made it, but yeah, I can take a shot of it. And like, it's really up to the customer, like either you can go with it or not. And that's, and that's really tricky. Um, I don't recommend you to always do that unless you're really confident in your skill set because i would hate for you to create a drink and then they're just like it's nasty and then you gotta pour it out and depending on what bar you're in you might have to pay for it 
So my first night, I got a lot of people just asking for regular drinks and then, and I had to be quick. I had to be quick, but I couldn't be, I had to learn to be quick. Cause you, you think being quick is always good, but if you don't have the certain steps in alignment, you can really fuck yourself up. Like you think you're quick, but you're not that quick because you got bottles and places that they, they're not really supposed to be. Um, you think you're quick, but you know, maybe you're supposed to bust your, your glasses and stuff and you're not busting your glasses. Uh, you might be quick, but you're getting orders incorrect. You're getting money incorrect all the time. Um, you're shorting yourself or you're overpaying yourself. I, I liked the dive bar. It was a great training, a training ground. Um, it was a rough area. So I think for me though, I was a little nervous because like people be getting mad. Like hood people get so mad over their liquor and their food. Like don't fuck up their liquor. Don't fuck up their food. If you fuck up their liquor and you fuck up their food, they might shoot you or stab you. But then you have some people who are just like, like real grade A assholes. And so you make a little, little mistake and they want to berate you. You know, I ain't give you no tip, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, bro, I said I was sorry. Like, what more would you want? Like, you, you want me to suck your dick? I'm not doing that. Not for no two dollars. If I'm sucking dick, you pay me for it, bro. Real hot girl shit. I'm not suck. I don't suck. But let's not talk about that. And then just having to work with this chick. This chick was super fast. So um, there were times when she would hurry up and like I would go and find me a customer and she just already have them. And it's just like, damn, bitch. Like let me let me eat a little bit too. You had 900 people and you trying to come and take like my four people and some people are just like well it's customer service no because there's people who she won't take because she knows they're not gonna take them it's not that sucks in the bartender world but you know it happens you just you you either eat or you be eaten some days i eat some days i get eaten <whistles> like i didn't have any big issue it was so long it was so long ago geez um I don't remember having any big issues. I remember being super scared when it happened. I was so, I just, I felt in my element. I felt in my element and um, I felt like, like, oh man, this is what I was supposed to do. Like I like, I like being around liquor and spirits and talking about them, I like making good drinks. I like people enjoying themselves. Um, you know, I like it. The only thing that, that that really sucks is like when you're out there and somebody wants to get buck over bull crap and they want to start shooting and fighting and, you know, and, and the fighting part, I'm not even bothered by the fighting part because, you know, I find that kind of like, yeah, gladiator off of his head. I think it's cool for me. What I don't like though is I don't like the, um, like when they, I'm not saying this happens all the time, but if you in a hood bar, you know some dudes want to bring that thing, bring that thing in, and they want to start shooting people because they, uh, uh I ain't got time to get shot. I'm, I'm too old for it. I need me to be, I need to be in a place where I just have to worry about being quick, and I don't have to worry. I don't have the mindset to deal with hood, hood niggas. You know, it's not my thing. I don't like. I just don't like it. Like I just hate the hood niggas. Like. That's why I don't date hood niggas, cause I just, not all, but like these, you know, when you get these in the bars and they get drunk and they want to start wanna do, they just wanna start doing like just dumb shit. Like they wanna start fighting or they wanna argue over 25 cents or they wanna try just walk out on a tab. That happens everywhere, that happens everywhere. But it's just kinda like, wow, like you just, shitty 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 but if you're scared you go out try to bartend give like if i if i could recommend anything if you want to get out to bartending watch youtube like i'm not even being facetious watch youtube when you watch it for hours and you find some really good people to watch like rockstar bar um rockstar uh, rockstar bar girl she's a pretty good one bartending pro that's a good one um learn your basics know your liquors vodka gin rum tequila whiskey scotch brandy 
you you might be able to bullshit your way into a bartending job just because you know you're just confident which is the half the battle just confidence is half the battle um but once you get in there and you start working and people ask you like let me get a maker's mark and you're just like what is that like and there's hundreds of types of liquor there's hundreds of liquors but i will start getting familiar with what what you, the average people in the bar or restaurant that you're attending or that you're desiring to go to, what are they drinking there? If you want to apply for a bar downtown, go and visit a bar outside of hours and go sit and just read the liquors up there. You know, do they have um, some, some conventional ones like Hennessy and Tito's and, and, um, Jose Cuervo. Um, do they have something a little bit more sophisticated or a little bit more, you know, different? Uh, a Kettle One, uh, Lafroy, Casamigos. There's all kinds of different drinks out there. So you want to first know the different types of liquors out there. You want to know brands. You know, if someone comes to your bar and says, you know, uh, uh, can I get a Ciroc? If you don't have a Ciroc, what other brands would you recommend? What other types of brands in your bar would you recommend? And one thing is the bartender, like, l like at least start learning basic cocktails. Um, Long Island iced teas, sex on the beach, um, tequila sunrises, screwdriver, old fashions, Manhattan's. Um, mm, I guess you can learn daiquiris. Margaritas for show. Learn what are the mixed drinks that people ask there like just stay there and just listen just eavesdrop people watch and learn those drinks because if you come in and or admit that you're new but if you come to me talking about you've had four years and you're like oh what's in what's in a screwdriver or what's in a long island i'm gonna be concerned like mm. but you know i, I guess it, it's, it goes either way because if i go to I've been bartending for like four years, and if someone's like, can you make a dark and stormy, I'd have to go look that up, so that's not fair. I apologize. But thank you so much, you guys. I'm going to have more videos on here, and the goal is to release every week. Um, I don't know what day, but I know I could do once a week with this, because usually I come home, and I'm looking cute already. Mm -mm. Meow. Mm. All right, you guys, you know what that means. And this glass is empty and so am i thank you so much don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and come back for some more interesting cocktails that i will share with you Bye bye